Hi, I'm Phil Malone and I'm the coach of the GeForce FTC team. This video is going to show you the easiest way to set up your new ZTE phone that you'll be using with your FTC control system. Uh, this video is made prior to the official release of the system, so this is based on information that's uh, accumulating on the FTC forum and other resources like uh, what we were shown at the World Championship. So, could be some minor changes as time goes on, but uh, it took a little while to get this, this little guy set up, so I figured I'd show you the easiest way to do it. Today I'm going to be showing you how to unpack the uh, Boost Mobile version of this phone. This is the ZTE Speed. Um, you can get these phones on Amazon or Best Buy currently for $39.99. It comes with a prepaid plan. Um, but we don't have any intention of using the plan. This is a really, really great deal. We're not sure how much longer these will last like this. Probably once the FTC team snap up the supply, you're not going to be able to get them this cheap anymore. Um, Boost Mobile will figure out what's going on. Uh, these are normally a $100 phone without a plan. All right, so we're going to rip this puppy open. Comes with miscellaneous user guides and open. Follow the instructions. Basically. The good news is this is not one of those horrible blister packs that you can cut yourself open trying to use. Uh, the phone comes with a basic charger, cable. And this cable that comes with the phone is perfect for plugging into your PC to do development. So don't lose that. So cable. the first thing we're going to do is pop the back open to take out the SIM card. This back comes off pretty easily. Just apply some fingernails around the edges. I would recommend not using a screwdriver for this because you don't want to damage any of the internals. So the back has come off, and you see in here. Right here, there's a little card. If I push that in, click it in, and then pull it out. So this phone is now longer, no longer able to uh, connect to a, uh, a, a cellular network. So I'm going to put the cover back on. And the other thing is, there's actually a little clear cover on here. I found that that actually makes the phone kind of hard to use. So take that off before you start configuring it. All right. So now I'm going to power this guy up and uh, show you how it works. So in order to start up the phone, you need to press and hold the button on the top right hand corner. So I'm going to do that. And you get the boot screen. Uh, this is the initial screen. Uh, this will change over to the Android startup screen, at which point it will then prompt you for some uh, accessibility information. So we're going to uh, zoom past this and see what happens when the main screen comes up. Before activation, you can turn on the TalkBack voice navigation feature. Double tap the center of your screen to activate this feature. To enable other features, tap accessibility settings. To continue activation, press next. So we don't need to do any of that. So we're just going to go next. Select English as our language. Uh, say next. And the first thing it's going to do is let us connect to our network if we want to. So I'm going to do that here. Um, Select my network and turn on show password because I find the small keypad here is difficult to use. So I'm going to turn that on so I can see that. Connect to my network. Now it's going to tell me I have an error because it can't connect to the um, wireless network, uh, the cellular network, because it doesn't have a, uh, a SIM card. Do these all again. You can wait for them to go away. You can just click the button. And now this is the first time entry into Android, and it's showing some little tips on how to do things. I'm just going to skip by here. And here's the main startup screen. Uh, where you'll go most is you'll use the um, apps button down here, the one with little boxes on it. And this will bring up your main screen. And if we slide this to the right, oops, slide it to the left, 
you see we have the settings button. So pretty much everything is done from the settings option at this point. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it doesn't try to access um, the cellular network even though it can't. So I'm going to turn on airplane mode and then return on Wi-Fi. So at this point it's just accessing everything through Wi-Fi. No need to tap Bluetooth on at all. So now we are going to uh, disable any attempts to um, update uh, just in case Google decides it wants to update the operating system to um, Android uh, 5.0 we're going to tell it uh, that we don't even want to know that's going to happen. So we're going to use the uh, a Google option here. So we're going to go on settings and we're going to go to the apps option and we're going to go to all and it will provide a list of all the apps that are currently on the machine without, with or without running. We're going to scroll down to Google Services Framework. Google Services Framework. Select that. And we're going to turn off Show Notifications. So even if it does decide to uh, find out about updates, it won't tell us about them. I'm not sure the consequences of dis disabling this altogether. I guess that's an experiment for a later time. So we're going to go back, hit my back button here, and back again. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up the ability to use this uh, phone with Android Studios. And to do that, we need to enable the ADB interface, Android Debugger Bridge. Uh, and we do this by uh, becoming a software developer. So the first thing you'll notice if you scroll down through this list here, uh, there is no software development uh, options. So we need to activate this feature. So we go down to About Phone, select that, slide down to Software Version, and we need to hit this seven times. One, two, three, and now it's going to do a countdown. Four, five, six, seven. So it says, Now I am a developer. So if I hit the Back button here now, you'll see there's a new Developer Options menu under System. So we're going to go into Developer Options and we are going to enable USB debugging and we say yes we want to do that so at this point we are enabled and we are ready to go there so the only other thing we need to do here is we need to um, make sure that when we plug into a PC or other device the drivers are there to support the, uh, U the developer bridge debugging bridge uh, so to do that we're going to find the um, connect to PC options here. Select connect to PC. And there's several options here. Currently media device is selected. That means that if we were to plug this into the PC now, it would just assume that it's a flash drive and it would be able to download files and images and stuff like that. We really don't want it to do that. What we want to do is we want to install uh, the drivers so that we can use it um, for ADB. Oh, wake up here. Oops, sorry. Uh, back. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to select install driver. I'm just going to go back in there and verify that, that was selected install driver. What this means is that the next time we plug this into the PC the phone is going to attempt to make sure that the correct drivers are installed for the ADB interface. Uh, and so we're pretty much done there and enable USB, debug USB debugging is still active. So we're going to hit the back here. One other thing that, that I like to do here is I'm going to um, uh, make sure that when the phone is in the robot or on the driver station that if it gets knocked or bumped over that it doesn't rotate the screen and possibly temporarily disconnect the uh, the connection. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into display and I'm going to turn off auto rotate. By doing this the phone will always keep in the uh, portrait mode uh, so once we start running the apps they'll stay running all the time. Uh, back. Alright, so at this point we're ready to plug the device into the PC and make sure the drivers are installed. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you connect your phone to your PC. So I'm going to turn this on, press to activate the screen. It's just standard USB, this is the cable that came with the phone. Plug it in on the left hand side. Alright, so it's done several things. See it's brought up. Um, a driver to install on the screen. It may that may happen. That may take a few seconds before that happens. And it's brought me to my connected PC page here. 
and it's knowing it's doing it's bringing the driver up because I've got install driver something to note here is that once you've done this once and the driver's running on your machine you may want to change this setting back to charge only so it doesn't bring the screen up each time and doesn't pop up the driver uh, but at this point I will just follow the screen here and run the install I'm just answering all the questions with a yes, basically. All right, so everything's in place here. Now I'm going to show you a way that you can verify that you've got a, a, an active debugging connection. But before we leave here, I'm going to change this back to charge only so that um, it does not connect this way next time. Now this is the Windows 7 machine, so I'm just going to pop up the control panel and you will see how the device appears on the device list. So I'm going to go to the system folder here, device manager, and at the top here you see there's an Android phone and there's our phone. It's very important this is ADB interface. This indicates that the Android Studios will be able to access the phone. If it doesn't say ADB, uh, you probably won't be able to develop on the phone. I'm going to shut these down. I'm going to bring up Android Studios. And it says I have an unauthorized phone. All right, so the reason this phone is unauthorized is because when you first connect the phone to the computer, it should verify that you uh, agree to connect to the computer. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to disconnect the phone. Well, first I'll turn it on I guess. Unlock the screen. And you see down here it's currently asking me allow USB debugging. And it's got the computer ID, the fingerprint and I'm going to say uh, allow, always allow from this computer. Check that. And then I'm going to say OK. And now if I look back up on my screen up here, you'll see that my devices on Android Studios, it lists, it lists the phone. So now I can develop and download directly this phone. It will remember that setting so I won't ever have to enable the phone again. So, I hope this has helped you get your ZTE speed phone from this to this and uh, stay tuned and we'll try and produce some more videos to show you how to use this new system with your FTC robot. Thanks very much.